get spiritual benefits from physical elements? Hi, my name is Ted Rosenblatt, and this is Talks with Dad Rod, and this is my father, Dr. Rod Rosenblatt. Um, this kind of lo- runs along the line of, of the, the conversations we have sometimes about Gnosticism and so forth, but uh, how is it possible to receive spiritual benefits from something physical like bread and wine? Uh-huh. Um, a very, very important question. <clears throat> and I, I tell this story about a brilliant young evangelical who was in class with me, doctrine class, years ago at Westmont. I remember she was in the front row, and we were about to start a section on sacraments. And I looked at her and said, um, actually, you're on my side on this one. And she said, no, I'm not. You sound Roman Catholic. I said, you just haven't thought about it much, and here you're going to think about it when we do this coming section. I said, let me ask you one question. Have you bet your whole eternal life on particular blood shed from particular Jewish veins from a particular man on a cross? And she said, well, yes. I said, see, you're with me on this. And we'll do some of the details, you know, in the coming weeks here. But you're on me with this. You can get spiritual benefits from material elements. So the body and the blood um, actually bring a spiritual forgiveness. You're actually receiving forgiveness with your mouth. Yeah, and it's in a certain way repetitive based on what we believe happened on the cross for us. That is, his blood redeems us. And that was a physical man Ab- on that physical cross. Absolutely. On that physical Friday. Absolutely. In, our, in real human history and so forth, actually died and so forth. If, his, if that man dying on that cross in front of the eyes of a whole bunch of witnesses, it was just a man up on a cross. Right. I mean, other than the fact that when he cried out and the death occurred, sure. the whole earth went black. You know, sure. you know, a whole bunch of supernatural things happen. Yep. People rose out of the graves and, and were speaking. Yep. But the, the key thing there is don't buy that dictum that you can't get spiritual benefits from material elements. You already, as a Christian, believe you can. Christ's blood. But isn't that how Scripture, like St. Paul a lot, talks? The language in there, and, and of course we always, there is the one hill we always just just beat each other up over is baptism. Sure. Every single time. Sure. I was just on Twitter um, recently. That was the first assignment I gave to my students who were going to start with baptism. It was pre-computer days. So I said, use any biblical helps you can. Nave's topical Bible. I don't care what you use. Just read the passages that talk about baptism. You don't have to take notes. You don't have to do anything. Just read them, every one of them. And that changed a lot of things before we even started. Just read the passages. If you just go through all the baptism, yeah. baptism-related passages. Right. Just read them. That's a good, that's a good practice. It's a good thing to go through that. I think uh, um, it's hard because I think we want to trust our, what we perceive as a trustworthy exegete. We want to trust somebody who's pulling things out of Scripture but we aren't going and, and looking it up ourselves as much. Even if we've gone and read Scripture, we listen to Scripture, right? And uh, we've taken the time to do that. You know, even having read all of Scripture, sure, it's funny. There's so much of it. I can't imagine. Yeah, my my Courtney's line is it has so many pages. <laughs> <laughs> so, and uh, and you knew somebody who's was it his grandfather memorized all of Shakespeare or something? There was an old story. Um, Anyway, this is another thing to talk about another time, but uh, the human mind is capable of of doing a lot, but we don't live in that. That is not what we do in our day-to-day lives. We need it put back into us because we just forget it again. Yeah, I I think Lutherans especially need encouragement to memorize biblical text after catechism. It should be the, the navigators used to do that. 
They memorized whole chapters of the New Testament. They could recite Romans 8. Chinese Christians had to do that because of the danger of owning Bibles. A family would be responsible so they could stand up and recite a chapter word for word for the Sunday morning service. Well, we, I'll just put it this way. Cause I'll, I, I mean, we can dig in on the baptism subjects, uh, ad infinite, ad nauseum. And, uh, I don't, I don't want to just keep well, banging key... that drum here. What I'm saying is, is we as we as sons of Adam and daughters of Eve want to fight the word of God and yeah. try to turn it into something else, which is really just, the, you know, just the next iteration of, of the very beginning, which is, did he really say? Sure. That's, we take it and we try to... There was a simple to... answer to that Eve could have given, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, the, the, the devil's better at this than we. Yep. The seduction is strong yep. to say no. Um, and that's what we fight with, where we look at it and say, it can't be that simple. Sure. You can't actually do something. Yep. No. Yep. Because then that would mean I have to rethink a bunch of stuff or something like that. There's all, there's all kinds of pieces that go along. A bunch of dominoes start falling in all these different directions. Yep. But, but the, we as Lutherans look at it and say, in the physical elements... Which, which is, you know, when you get the words of institution at the Lord's Supper, that's God's word. Yep. And we say this is, this wine and this bread is at this point the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ given into death for you. Yep. Right? Sinner. Yep. So we say the words of institution there, it's not a magic trick. It's, nope. not, a, it's not a spell being cast. Nope. But God's word does something. The so whole, the whole liturgy is Bible verses. And that includes the section on the Lord's Supper. It's Bible verses, what we, we say, call the liturgy. And we say in the case of baptism, it's, it's God's word, not just water. It's like, you know, the water's yep. over here, but it's really God's word that's doing this thing yep. in and through, through, in and through. Yep. Yep. The key question for other Christians is, do baptism and the Lord's Supper do anything? And the Lutherans say, it sure does. And others say... Well, and that's the tangle. We go, we go all over the place, and, and we see the. Um, yeah, no. If you look at scripture over here, well, no. If you take this, if you put the, if you take this into consideration, well, and so we're always jousting. We're always kind of doing this, and this is just the way it's going to go. Yep. This is the discussion. But we as Lutherans will stand on this hill and, and stand our ground on it and say, Scripture says it. We believe it, and so we're going to point to it. You know, the baptiz or baptism now saves you. Take eat. This is my body. Take drink, this is That's what uh, the he blood said. of the new covenant. Yep. Before it took place, he said that to them at that Passover supper. And I'm sure if I'd have been there, I would have said to the guy next to me, what's he talking about? What did he just say? Yeah. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Can I yeah. ask a question? Yeah. <laughs> what did you just say? Yeah. Things that aren't recorded. You know, it's, I, I would have been right with the disciples saying, I have no idea what's going on here. Well, especially if you've been raised as a, as a faithful Jew yep. in the Old Testament. Yep. I mean, that's beyond new. Look, I make all things new. Is a yeah. whole, that's a brain bender. And so we discuss it and we fight over it and we have our different doctrines and we don't agree and that's how this goes. But, but we will always hold and work toward uh, a tangible, touchable um, benefit that, the, that, that God intended to give us in his son that brings forgiveness. It isn't, it isn't uh, just a sign or a symbol or any other number of things um, from our perspective reading the text. And so we will say, you can receive uh, assurance. You can receive um, forgiveness of sin. consolation through the forgiveness of sin. Yep. It is, you get the assurance and the consolation because your sins are forgiven. Is it and easier? it's from outside of you, not from going within to find the answer, but going outside to the promises. The outside thing coming to us. We're going to wrap it and uh, hope you enjoy this. And we hope this is kind of scratching where it itches. And uh, go to 1517.org for more. We'll catch you next time. Thank you for joining us on Talks with Dad Rod, part of the 1517 Podcast Network. 
This podcast and all 1517's content is made possible through financial support by listeners just like you. Please visit 1517.org for more, and please consider clicking on the donate button and making a recurring or one-time contribution to help us share this good news in a world which so desperately needs it.